What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is the uh, 4th of July weekend here in the States, so I'm not sure if everyone's going to be around or watching videos or whatever, but I have only one request, and that is all of you return on Monday with all 10 of your fingers and toes, assuming you have 10 now. I'll be attending some fireworks tonight because America, and then I'll be firing off some of my own on Saturday, which I'll probably show you all on Twitter. Uh, now, I know people are getting tired of me reminding, but I'll try to only do it every couple of days. About 40% of my viewers are not subscribed. I know it's never going to be zero. I know it's never going to be 20, but I hope given the variety of topics I cover that today will be the day I earn your subscription. There's a little red button down below. Go ahead and click that, turn your notifications on so you get notified each and every time I upload. I cover a wide variety of topics and I'd love to uh, earn your viewership. Now, the man babies are again. The man babies are at it again with The Last of Us 2. Now, the game, as I've talked about many, 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 many times, it's not a 0 out of 10. It's also not a 10 out of 10. It's not a 1 out of 10. It's not a 2 out of 10. It's not a 3 out of 10. It's not a 4 out of 10. You want to talk about it being a 5, 6, 7, or 8? That's a conversation worth having. Uh, the problem is everybody was so polarized by uh, the loss of a beloved character that you elicited this type of response. It's not about being a man, baby, according to GQ, but nonetheless, The Last of Us Part 2's man, baby, backlash is a stain on fan culture. That's right. Again, we're going to fall back on the old tried and true. If you don't like it, you have a problem with gay folks. You're not progressive if you don't like Neil Druckmann uh, ending the beloved character and making you play as the person who did it. The Last, last of Us Part 2 is always going to be divisive. It was written to evoke anger and frustration and upset and debate. In the very first sentence... You destroy your entire argument. So you yourself admit, Sam White, that The Last of Us Part Two was written to elicit emotional responses, and then they got them. The problem is, he didn't stick the landing. He didn't get the review, or he didn't. the fans didn't like it. He thought they would. That's okay. In a recent interview with the game's director, Neil Druckmann, he told us he wanted to dismantle a game that so many gamers would hold sacred. He wanted to dismantle a game. So you wanted the backlash. While well, there have been plenty of well-articulated critiques of the game's ultra-spicy uh, revenge quest, one particular fan con constituency... Uh, primarily internet man babies and basement lurkers has reacted especially bad. Now, obviously, you don't know where people live. Now, I live essentially in the studio, which is in my basement. That basement isn't a home that I own. That basement isn't a 3,000 square foot home. That basement, that house is well furnished. It has a Mario, custom Mario cat play tube on the wall. It has a pool in the backyard. So what about being in my basement discounts my opinion? Are you, are you saying because I live in a basement, essentially, that my opinion is discounted? Or that there's anything wrong with living in a basement? You know, when I was young, I begged my parents, 13, 14, 15, just to make my room in the basement. I was, it was unfinished. I was like, I'll just get some cheap carpet. I'll throw it down. I just want to have this big open space all for me they never let, never let me do it because uh, there were no windows to get out so they didn't want me to burn alive stupid parents in fact the response has been more aggressive and dramatic than ever before this is of course not the first backlash against a video game in 2012 mass effect 3 the conclusion of the trilogy sci-fi epics incited a petition to get the editing the ending changed by the developers who actually caved and did it no Man's Sky was such a disappointment to many that its lead designer, Sean Murray, became a target of meanness online. It's not just exclusive to video games, either. 
although it's usually where this kind of unreserved, irrational fury is most prevalent. Really? Have you checked out politics, Twitter? You need only to look at the Star Wars Last Jedi. Oh, it's one of these people. All right. How toxic a phantom can become when it weaponizes itself to protect the thing it purports to own. Again, here we go with the entitled gamers. Entitled gamers. You are entitled to a good product when you give the company your money. All right? You're entitled to give a game a poor review if you paid for it and you didn't like it. That's how it works. The company is not, however, entitled to my money. The company is also not entitled to my praise. The most direct expression of that ire is usually in the form of review brigading. The charming practice entails a horde of sweaty incels headed to Metacritic or another review-based outlet such as Steam to have their, quote, voices heard. And what can only be described in the ultimate Karen move. It's the, I want to speak to the manager of the video game world. Um, no it isn't. No it isn't. It's reviewing a product you purchased. What's wrong with that? So are you saying that all online reviews are bad? Are you saying that all the people that review brigaded with 10 out of 10s were also Karens? Or just the negative ones? The last was part two. Might have sold 4 million copies in the first week, becoming PlayStation's fastest selling exclusive ever, asterisk, by the way, but it has affected review brigaders on an epic scale. The anger has come to, spoiler alert, Naughty Dog dared to end the off the protagonist of the first game, not to mention have the gall to represent... Ah, oh, here we go. If you don't like the game, you don't like Wamen uh, and other people, and, and black folks. Where Where is that? Where is any comment talking about the pe black people in the game? Now, I have seen some people's comments around trans stuff and, and the LGBTQ stuff, but nothing about black people. That is something Naughty Dog pushes for its game because ultimately it leads to, quote, better stories. Yeah, that's why your game is a 5 out of 10 and everyone hates the story. How'd that work out for you, Neil Druckmann? Uh, so... A subsection of the game world seems to despise this. They're angry that there's a trans character. No, they're not. Claiming that trans people have no place in a post-apocalyptic world because HRT wouldn't be available. What? It wouldn't be available. And also, Abby would not be swole in the post-apocalyptic world unless she's eating two to three zebras a day. Unless she's hitting the gym two to three, four hours a day every day. She has a steady flow of high-quality proteins. She would not have been that fit. She would have been meek. And you could say the exact same thing for any man with that level of muscle mass. Would have been even more difficult for a woman to maintain, you know, because biology. Ugh, biology. They're so angry that a woman like Abby, the game's secret second protagonist, even exists in a video game. Jim fit and androgynous. She does not match their idea of what a woman should be. Gamers have channeled that dislike into bizarre rumor-mongering, such as altering clips and creating memes to suggest Neil Druckmann concocted the spicy scene so he himself could star in it with the game's lead actress. Not memes! Won't somebody think of the children? Review brigades on Steam or Metacritic or wherever are more often than not written by people who have clearly not played the game in question. Again, that goes for zeros and that goes for tens, but you never mention that. You need to only look at the Metacritic Part 2 page to see the game is a critical aggregate of 94. Yeah, shills. Which indicates a claim. This is so ridiculous. Your entire argument is people who rely on access journalism, people who we know were contacted by Sony if they gave them a, a negative review, people we know were scrubbed based on the likelihood of them getting a review copy. You expect us to believe these critical outlets are unbiased. I'm not making that up. Vice and Polygon were both contacted after giving the game negative reviews. If you don't think that Naughty Dog's PR or Sony's PR cherry-picked who got a review copy, you're out of your mind. Why wouldn't you give a review copy to Angry Joe? Because you knew he would be honest. By the way, Angry Joe gave it a 6 out of 10. And 
144,000 people agree with that to a paltry 9,400. Are these just review brigaders? Or are these people that played the game and don't like it either? You look at the score and it's a 4.0 out of 10. Where is it right now? 5.1. Yeah. Now it's at 110,000 reviews. I said it before and I said it again. It's a, it's a 6. 6 or a 7. 8 if you're a mega fan. 5, 4 if you are someone that really was invested in the character Joel. Because the game relies so heavily on its story, that's what you're going to live or die on in the reviews. It's crept up to 5.1. I think it should be around a 6 by the time it's all said and done. I'm sure they're breathing a sigh of relief that this is no longer read. But I'm sure they don't like Angry Joe's trending video to 1.5 million viewers saying the game sucks. And have basically have him dunk on it for 48 minutes. By the way, you should watch it. It's a great review. Much of the talk about The Last of Us Part 2 before launch was about how the game deals with hate. A story of retribution and justice and revenge in the most violent of terms. Having finished it now, it's also a very game about a game about very much about love, too. A game about seeing two sides of the story and how love and compassion, blah, blah, blah. The game gamers review brigading and sending meanness not only missed the point of the game's story, they epitomized the worst of us. They, because they don't like the game and you did. Look, you're, you're entitled to like the game. I've always said that. Their views limit the potential of the art form by pushing directors and studios to kowtow to fandom and allow stories to be led by committee. Well, no, they aren't. You can put out a game that gets review brigaded. Nobody's stopping you. Are you indicating that their video game industry might care about profit and pleasing their customers? What a terrible thing. What a terrible thing, you know, to not actively look to incite uh, rage from the people that give you their hard-earned money. You know, I'm older now. I'm very blessed to have supporters here on YouTube. Buying a $60 game isn't a huge financial investment for me anymore, but it was for most of my life. And well until I was in my early 30s, I had to think long and hard about buying a video game because that was 60 bucks. When I was in high school, college, first five years out of college, it was a lot of money. And I'd rather spend it with a developer who isn't looking to toy with my emotions and tear down the things I love. Hope you enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you again real soon.